artist. I am super psyched to introduce to you today our project, which is these cute little illustrations of dogs. I um, was inspired by my very own dog and the dogs that I'm seeing as I walk around in our neighborhood. And so dogs are all different and so unique. And so this is the perfect assignment for us to use our homemade watercolors that um, we can use them to make these beautiful shapes and then come in with a Sharpie marker or another type of black marker or even a black colored pencil where you can come in and, um, and add some details, those cute little details. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps that I took so that you can make your very own cute doggy illustration. Hello creatives. Before we can get started with our art projects for this week, we have to make some paints. Some of you may not have watercolors at your house, and that's been limiting us on the projects we've been doing. So we're gonna do some experiments using some common everyday items that you probably have in your house. And I'm gonna give you some couple of suggestions and options on what you can do if you do not have exactly what I am proposing for us to use and I'm mixing up. So we do not necessarily need this green. So if you have blue, red, and yellow, you can do everything that we are gonna be um, working on. If not, you can be creative because you could be using some other supplies like maybe sprinkles that I have here. I have green sprinkles and I also have some red sprinkles. Now these, we're gonna see how they do compared to our other food coloring. So I didn't have green I mean, I didn't have blue in my sprinkles, but you can just kind of figure it out and figure out what you do have. And this over here is coffee. So there's other some common spices and coffee that you can use if you want to make your own watercolors with other um, types to value. So let's get started kind of experimenting with um, our food coloring. You're first gonna need water. So I'm just gonna put a very small amount of water into three separate dishes for my food coloring. And then I'm gonna have some water over to the side and that's where we're gonna put our sprinkles. But again, it's very little amount. I'm gonna start with this blue right here. And I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna see what two drops of this blue will do. And if I take my brush and I stir it, ooh, it's kinda of nice, right? It's kind of deep, dark. You can kinda of see what that looks like right here. Pretty good. I might try and add actually two more drops. And then see if that changes things. A Little bit more intense, a little bit more blue. So I think I like where this is going. So let's go ahead and try out with um, red and yellow and see what it does. Now yellow, traditionally, you're gonna need more of a very light value, but I'm gonna start out with four of those drops in my yellow. That's not bad at all. So I definitely can see that the blue and the yellow in here. Now let's try the red, four drops of my red. And definitely in my um, containers, you definitely can see that red, yellow, and blue. Now let's see how this compares to what the sprinkles will do. So again, I've added a very small amount and I generally just like to cook this way. I just put a dab of pinch of salt in my hand and that's the way I kind of measure. So I just kind of put a, a little handful, maybe a tablespoon, of those crystals in there. Now, I don't feel like it's quite as intense as the others, but you can definitely see there is a little bit um, of that green color. So I'm gonna add a little bit more sprinkles. And I've noticed that it takes a little bit longer for this to dissolve. It doesn't dissolve right away because there's sugar crystals. So I think I'm gonna blend a little bit more with my brush. Now let's try out the red. Again, I'm gonna add more of that red because I had to on the green and then I'm gonna stir that around. Ooh, not a fan. I don't know what kind this is. This one is Betty Crocker. And this one, uh, it's not, I don't know. The Betty Crocker doesn't seem to be doing as well. So you might have to just test out what yours are gonna do so that you can get the color consistency that you like in here. So again, I definitely like the food coloring option best. So if you have that as your option, because you have some of it left over from any icing that you've been decorating cakes with. And then this is my coffee. So this is my leftover coffee from the morning. And I know I got a nice brown. So top picks, I like food coloring the best. But again, you have to figure out what's best for you. 
All right, so your first job is, is to mix your colors so you can get ready to paint. So to get started, you're going to need those beautiful watercolors that you just made. Red, yellow, and blue would be perfect, but if you don't have that, something else you can try out. You can use different colors. Um, you also need paper so that you can, um, something thick paper, um, a Sharpie marker, and some other types of um, markers that you can use to add extra detail. All right, I'm going to start with the red. So what we want to do is, is you can just start by drawing um, a smiley face or a rainbow, um, upside down rainbow, and we want to make simple shapes. This is only to um, just do the basic shape of the dog. We're not adding extra detail in here. Um, I'm going to start out with just using straight red and I'm going to try to graduate and mix my colors as I go um, so that I can work in all of the colors of the rainbow as I work. I'm also going to try to just change up the shapes of all of my heads so that when I get done I have a lot of different variety. If you want to have an extra plate or something, a piece of paper that you can mix these colors on, I am going to mix a little yellow and red together so I can change up my colors a little bit so I can make more of an orange color. And again, I am just simply going to be making all of these just a little bit different. So as I move through my colors, I'm going to try to go from red to orange to yellow-orange and then to yellow, greens, and blues. And I am going to quickly go through changing up all of my shapes. You guys join me. Have fun mixing your colors and adding variety to your shapes for your dogs. Okay, so now we're ready to get started with adding some of those details. My watercolor has dried and now I have my Crayola markers. You can use whatever you have, but these are going to add little details. So I can look at each one of these interesting shapes and I maybe can make cheeks or maybe I can make some color with the noses, but I'm going to switch up some of my colors because I have other rainbow of colors too. So I'm going to come back in and on some of them, on my reds, I'm going to add in some details in the ears like I'm doing here, or maybe some details in the nose. Um, so as I finish up, I'm just going to add little extra personality and spots to mine. And then on top of that, I'm going to come in and add some things with my Sharpie marker. So now I can just outline and add some details maybe to the ears if I want to come in and add that nose in there. And maybe this, this doggy is sleeping a little bit, so I'm going to add some eyelashes because this is a cute little pink doggy um, and a tongue. So you can see how I add personality to them. Now this one over here, he may change up a little bit. He's got some spots on him over here and I'm going to add his little eyes and then the bottom for his nose. So you can see how each one of these can have their own special characteristics to them. So have fun and go. I'm going to go ahead and finish mine out. You do the same.